Good morning, guys. It's me, Amelie Katchian, and today will be our final lecture, uh, final session about uh, Schleming Gambit. And in this time, I would like to simply um, go over all possible lines, kind of giving you like important tips and making sure you will memorize this and uh, use it uh, in your in your practice in your career. So let's talk about again, maybe not the final time, because I hope I will have more games, or maybe you will send me more games. So let's talk about. So in our main lessons, uh, we discuss about two main response from white side, that's C3 and D3. So again, let's say that's C3. Let's say that's C3. I'm going to show you simply. I told you many times here, uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, D5 line because I believe in general D5 gives white better game. I mean, this situation should be, should be called better for white. I mean, if you play here, here, let's say, knight F6, very precise move order for white to play first F4, and play check. We play d4. Let's say that position, for instance, I believe white simply having better chances. Pretty much anything here is fine for white. This is probably the best try. Bishop g5. Here we have a castle, castle. And I think a couple moves here could be a very annoying for black. g4, very interesting move here. Or queen f1. Gives white almost better end game, so this kind of situations I'm sure is better for white. And typically, if you truly slim and gamut player from black side, you wouldn't like to play this kind of boring situation. So one of the most interesting games which happening in this line again, I'm going to remind you, it was I think many years ago it was the line it was a game between uh, Timon and Spielman. I think it was some kind of candid match uh, back to probably. 90s, early 90s, I'm not sure, but I do remember the game, what happened against Spielman beat Timman, and that's it. But in general, like I said, this line is supposed to be a better, supposed to be called better for white, period. My opinion, my advice to play here, knight f6, I uh, already told you that, and I think, I don't think, I don't see any, any problem here at all for, for black to play. The only thing could be challenging for, for black, it's a line like my game against Josh Friedel, uh, which you have to know. Uh, D4, basically bishop g7, here, here, and this is the more e6, yeah, bishop a4. And if you follow my game against Josh Friedel, you will remember the move to make here, it's a queen d6. Don't try to play c6. I played many years actually, but again I came to the conclusion after c6. Um, this is a very annoying sacrifice, and uh, you don't need to play. Even um, officially, you're not losing. You're okay, but uh, speaking practically, it's um, not pleasant to play. Don't try it. My advice. And uh, in these cases, uh, if white capture on c6, uh, then you're also okay. Uh, after rook e8, castle. Uh, you could try to play bishop e6, very solid move, or you could try to play c5 concrete to stop that d4 by controlling d4 square. A5 move here I tried a few times as well, also very funny, interesting. Uh, the point of a5 is actually to prepare this move possibly, but even if you stay classic, if you stay this way, you should be okay. Uh, this kind of case it should be okay. Uh, recently, I played a few games uh, by playing here, not the bishop d7 move, which is supposed to be, I mean, used to be called the main respond. I even played here uh, queen d7, because I believe uh, if uh, white will take on a6, you'll take on a6, I think it's okay for black to deal. Black has some activity, and typically that activity compensating some issues with pawn structure. That position, that c3, I don't have any problem. The only thing is, sometimes you could deal with this rare move, bishop c6, which actually I was thinking uh, to discuss about from bishop c6 move order, 
on move four. But since we have this position, I'm going to mention that as well. The way how you deal, again, in this case, you could consider to play EF, but even situations with this, it should be okay for black to play. In fact, the right move order, again, it's actually to take it first here and then play here, because originally, in this case, I could go EF and this is completely equal. I mean, black has no problem here at all. So, Nazi 3 move, it's fine. Uh, D3 move, we covered as well very nicely. Uh, so, my advice, don't try to play with bishop e7 behind the pawn. If you have a chance, always do, always do a bishop c5 move. Uh, I'm going to remind uh, Nazi 3, it's a bad move for white to play because bishop b4, Black actually wants to trade the bishop uh, for the knight and then play d6 and they have no problem at all after this. So Nazi 3 not an option. Castle King side is the best try. And then we have here Bishop C5. If White will go and try to take the pawn, usually this is okay for Black because they have a compensation after this. Because Bishop on C5 is pretty strong, plus uh, White still has some issue with defending E4 pawn. This is okay for you to play. And the only issue could be here if you deal with Queen D3 move uh, or Queen E2 move. It used to be called the main road, which used to be playing for many, many years. It's become uh, tricky. So for the reason because we have here move Queen C4 and forcing us to play uh, Queen E7. Otherwise, we have issue with these subjects. So I must play here. And now, uh, two things could be annoying for black here. The move which uh, I first met against uh, Indian Grandmaster Ganguly at World Open several years ago, and then Robert Hest uh, continued and played again against me at the US Championship. It's move B4. And even I did prepare some uh, for that move. I had some, uh, I had some improvement uh, against that move. So the line goes uh, here, queen a6, uh, queen bishop b6. If you remember my game against uh, Robert Hess, a4. And I had this move in g4. But still, the line is very, very intense here. And Robert played here a very interesting knight d2. And I played here. And if you remember my game against, again, Robert, uh, I made a mistake by jumping uh, knight h6. I thought I made a natural move because uh, at, uh, my vision was this. But I missed a very strong move by Hess, knight b1. And after this, I'm in big trouble. But according to computer, black still okay if I would play here knight f6. So this position also could be for you interesting to analyze and play. This is the first kind of challenging in the three line. And second challenge comes uh, if you would play this position. Second challenge comes here when black white has this. And white actually captures and captures on d4. Because typically these situations here uh, also looks like white's holding slightly edge, you know, and uh, let's say they're having a little bit more space, I would say, slightly more space. Actually, I'm sorry, first, yeah, it's okay, you can play this way, and then uh, looks like I have to play bishop b6, and then you do here, and that's a true situation when, um, again, it looks like uh, white has more space, they're pushing, you know, and it's a kind of you playing for the result for making a draw only. Kind of, you know. It's still okay, but slightly passive. And as I've played a few games, I recall the game against the Magnus Carlsen, a couple other games. But recently, uh, Timur Ajabov, who is the, the guy who played this line consistently against like strong players, Anant, uh, Carlsen, and because of him, I believe uh, Ivanchuk took his uh, kind of experience 
a bit recently announced in this line. So Rajabov came with pretty much brilliant idea here to keep his pawn structure. He found a very interesting move, knight d4. Knight d4, knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, c3, and then bishop b6. And since this guy is gone, the way how Rabov plays his positions, it's a here, it's a here, trying to cover this diagonal and preparing castle king side if he could. If not, then he's preparing castle to queen side. Well, so far, and not too many games, and so far, Rabov in, in a plus, he beat Michael Adams last year, and he drew a couple of years ago Peter Swidler from Russia. So the line is completely new. The line, obviously, it's all computerized. We need to spend more time. I'm not going to give you for sure evaluation of this position. I'm still at my, in my research of this position. But I'll tell you what, as a black side, myself, I actually start to uh, reconsider my decision and I'm not anymore playing like d6 or move 7. So I start to play uh, knight d4. So far I'm playing this move on ICC in my training games against my students. And it looks like the, the move is very interesting. So definitely it's a move to be considered and I mean it's really interesting to play. So this is a situation where black could have some challenge uh, in this line. So again, d3, it's the most challenging way to play against the Schlimm and Gambit. And now the rest. Uh, the rest, it's not so much. Um, number three choice, it used to be called um, one of the most sharpest way to deal with, uh, uh, with Schlemmen. But I don't think so it's actually a good move because this situation here, well, first of all, what almost forced to sacrifice a piece because any uh, move of the bishop gives black opportunity to pick up the pawn for free and then build up the very strong pawn chain. And I don't think so. A white has sufficient compensation there. So pretty much what has to sacrifice. And now what's going on, there is a two moves here, the move bishop g5 and move queen d4. Well, queen d4 completely harmless because after queen d7, black has no problem. Well, if you take queen 6 twice, you will meet uh, queen 6 check. If you uh, play castle king side, then I can actually take queen 4 And funniest part, this is nothing for white, pretty much lost. I mean, not lost, uh, but uh, black is could be even better. I mean, I mean, it's extra piece, you know. It's maybe some complications, but I believe so far I've won all my games as a black in these lines. I've played maybe three times altogether, so it's, um, I don't see anything from white side here. Um, this is the interesting way. Bishop g5, and now we have queen a5 check, not c3, here, here, here. It used to be called like, you know, primary option for white, I do remember many years ago when I was 13 years old, uh, I was a student at Tiran Petrosian School. Uh, and um, at that time, uh, Russian Grandmaster, Soviet Union Grandmaster Igor Gleck had this big article about like refutation of Schleman Gambit. And since I was a kid who, was, who liked to play Schleman, I had this like kind of order to analyze whole article and uh, being even agree or disagree with that article. And imagine when I was 13, we had no computers. So it, it's been done like manually, just to me, myself, board, and that's it. And I found many mistakes in this article. And even now I do remember this. Uh, so line, how it goes, knight d5, yeah, black could play actually a couple ways here. I think they could play uh, bishop e6 straight or b3 check second. The Basically, my idea was this, and then it actually had been published in some, um, I think, Italian magazine uh, by, uh, I think, by Grandmaster Parma. He analyzed this as well. So the line goes this way. Now, 
Well, if you take if you take on e6, you will met queen e5 check, and uh, you can pretty much resign pretty much. So what has to do castle first, and then bishop b6, very brave. Well, if you take my rook, two bishops, I think I'm fine. Uh, if you take it on e6, then you have this very interesting move, queen e5, and now basically I'm threatening the mate, and I've got to take uh, your knight by queen, not by king, by queen. And pretty much done deal because this is very dangerous. I think actually black it's uh it's fine here. It's better here. So if you do, I think that's the best option uh, to keep this queen away from this diagonal. But it's still okay. I mean, it's still better for black. I don't see anything here to be worried about. Uh, and second way to play, it's actually a very interesting move, um, a b3 check. The idea to prevent future castle and queen side because, yeah, I think that's the also idea here. And as you see, same problem, white has it. So after this, black is absolutely fine as well. So d4 move seems to me, again, completely harmless. If anyone will find something else here, welcome to challenge me, welcome to send me something I will um, discuss with you. So I don't see any point for why to play d4. My personal opinion, d4, it's a wrong move. Uh, sometimes they connecting d4 move with play, I think they do this kind of stuff, but this is nothing all right so next uh, to discuss i guess is going to be a positional threat positional move at knight c3 also popular sometimes uh, from white side and knight c3 the point of this system is to play very positionally idea one the idea behind it's playing this kind of situation when white still hold the slightly edge because of pawn structure. Well, again, um, in general, it should be okay for black to play. It should be about drawish. Um, a second way to play from black could be interesting and sharp. It's keep the bishop and play bishop h5. H uh, interesting as well. I mean, I tried a few times. So far, it's okay. I'm trying to, you know, stay, stay focused on this. And if you play here, play bishop g6. So if you play knight g3, I do play here bishop f3, and then I play here queen d5. Since uh, the black from e4 has been removed, uh, I think black is okay here as well. So in general, not much challenge. And uh, what else I could say uh, about this? Well, the rare moves such as uh, queen e2 has been very well known as a dangerous uh, for this weapon and it looks like this is could be uh, tricky for white to play uh, because I play DC and then castle queens a king side I have a two bishops so white is kind of behind development I mean some people do that but uh, again I don't see any problem a uh, couple years ago I think I played uh, maybe a year and a half ago I played against uh, uh, my let's say, consistent uh, rival on this line, uh, Jack Peters. Uh, I think we played, uh, I'm not sure how many times, maybe three or four. He surprised me by old way. He played uh, EF move. EF, E4, here. Queen E7, uh, Bishop C6, D C Knight D4, right. And he, what you must remember, it's to play Queen E5. Well, now this is the perpetual pretty much Troish, but if black, if white plays, let's say, trying to play for win, which uh, Jack did against me, because he never played for draw, and he played bishop e6, I took on e6, and now you must remember, uh, nice tip, nice move, it's bishop d6. The point of this move to delay uh, capturing pawn, because you have to keep your queen protected, and stop either of this pawn movement. So, because now, 
That's the idea, because now my queen is protected and I can handle this uh, e takes d3 move. And this is situations when uh, I believe uh, black simply better, uh, because uh, I attack the pawn, this pawn is going to be surrounded uh, very soon, so I think it's actually better for black, the situations here. And that's the only move you must remember. After bishop d6, I don't think so we have any issues. So I think we're pretty much done. Uh, I don't think so we are missing anything. Let me see. Yeah, I think we covered like main lines, not c3 and, and d3. So we cover like uh, side lines uh, such as bishop c6, queen e2, ef. I think in general that's what it is. So what can I say guys? You know, try on, try on, play it. I think you will have a lot of fun to play this opening. And most important, don't, don't back down, don't give up. Don't think if you lost the game, oh, it's a bad opening, uh, catch and told us some kind of terrible opening. No, take your time, take your time, play some game. In fact, before you play a real game in a real tournament, try to play some interesting, some kind of training games, I mean online, or maybe against your friends, and spend some time before you play it, and trust me, you will enjoy of playing this opening, because it gives you a little good days, sometimes it gives you bad days, but hey, tell me which opening will give you only good days. Sometimes uh, your favorite opening is going to upset you, but most of the times, why it's called favor opening because most of the times it keeps you smiling. So I hope you like it and if any questions uh, you're welcome to send me any anything and I will try to do my best to get back to you as soon as possible.